Welcome to St. Mary's University Church for this service of Choral Evensong. Today, Choral Evensong is sung by the choir of Shipton under Witchwood. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And our preacher today is Dr. Sarah Mortimer. We sit as the choir sing the song. The first lesson is written in the first book of Samuel, the 21st chapter. Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David, and saith unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us, about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord, to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Dug, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And there is not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. 
And the priest said, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, there is none like that, give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said, said unto him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? I have no need of madmen. Yet ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence. Shall this fellow come into my house? Here endeth the first lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter. And he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. 
And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake. And the people wondered, but some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan can be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt that the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armour, wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in, and dwell there. And the last state of a man is worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice, and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea. Rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And keep it. Here endeth the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My
rules are helpful, but they will only get us so far. Now I'm conscious in saying this, that the last few weeks have seen politicians on both sides of the Atlantic arrested, indicted, and threatened with suspension for interpreting the rules and even the law to breaking point and beyond. So perhaps I should say now that I don't mean to encourage anyone to fiddle the accounts or to store secret files in their shower. But I do want to suggest that sometimes there are things more important than sticking to the rules. And we need to learn not only how to keep them, but also how to interpret them in the light of what truly matters, in the light of the coming kingdom of God. We see this in our Old Testament lesson, in the exploits of David as he's fleeing from the jealous King Saul after David's heroic victories and the clear signs of God's favour upon him. Hungry and tired, David and his men need food, and he goes to demand some from the priest. There is only the holy, consecrated bread around, but that doesn't deter David from taking it. Then he leaves for Gath, where he is still not safe. And the only way to protect himself and his cause is to feign madness, so he will not seem a threat to those around him. David is not proud, not anxious for his status or the recognition of others. He does what is necessary to keep himself and his cause alive. But he does so not for his own benefit, or to damage or exploit others. He acts in the spirit of laws and rules designed to protect life and holiness, guided not by self-interest or ambition, but in the hope of serving God and God's people. David's commitment to God's cause runs through all that he does, and it is this which shapes his actions even the most unconventional. In Jesus' words, in our gospel reading, we hear too of this need for true, heartfelt commitment, a commitment that goes beyond following the rules, but instead forms our very souls. Jesus has healed a man who cannot speak, and this prompts a discussion with the crowd looking on about whether this power to heal comes from God or from Beelzebub, the prince of demons. The crowd wonder whether Jesus' miracles are simply a demonic trick, proof only that Jesus is in league with the devil. But Jesus makes them see he's not part of some strange quarrel among the demons, but engaged in a much more important task a task of overcoming evil and oppression through goodness and love. This is a task which is not for the half-hearted, but one that demands our full attention and one which must become central to who we are, to our very identity. How easy it can be, he says, simply to respond to God's call with a bit of dusting and sweeping of our souls as if all God wants is for us to be neat and tidy. But a surface clean, which doesn't penetrate our hearts, is simply a dangerous distraction from the true work of love, love revealed in Jesus' healing and in Jesus' life. If we're wondering what these strange words of scripture mean for us, then maybe the words of our anthem can help. This simple prayer, set by Thomas Tallis and sung so beautifully by the choir, asks God to give thy Holy Spirit into our hearts and lighten our understanding, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. 
if we allow God to fill our hearts with the Holy Spirit, then perhaps we too will know the wisdom that enables us to look through conventions and customs to the true values of human life. And we too can share in the work of David and of Jesus, the work of love and service to all God's people. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are our refuge and our strength. We pray for all those who are weary this day and all who are in need of healing. For those seeking refuge on our shores and for all who have little shelter from the heat of the day. Send your Holy Spirit to all in need that they may know your healing, comfort, and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of justice, bring aid to all those who are caught up in conflict or violence at this time, that they may know your peace and the power of your reconciling love. Give wisdom to the leaders of the nations and enable all with power to use it only for the common good with both compassion and boldness after the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God our Father, we pray for all those who take on the responsibility for caring for and nurturing others. We pray for those whose lives will set an example for children and for all who choose to parent in ways different from their own upbringing. On this Father's Day, we remember with thanks those who have shown us your fatherly heart in their tenderness, compassion and care. Help us too to show your love in the world through our own relationships, after the example of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We draw our prayers together in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you. peace of God, which passeth all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen.